In the HP pavilion that we replaced the power supply in, after the power supply was turned on, we found out that the DVD drive also did not work, the CD DVD drive. I've already taken that out of the computer, taken it apart, and as far as I can tell, there's something wrong with one of these boards, I'm not sure which. It's not really that important. We're just going to replace the whole drive. A lot easier to just replace the whole drive. So of course before I took this drive out, turned off the power supply on the computer and unplugged the power cable of course. So we'll go ahead and replace that CD DVD drive with this one here that we've already seen works. And since this is an older computer, it's going to be using an older DVD drive. You see it has the IDE connector, cable select, and only a Molex uh, power. So the way this will be hooked up, will we will take our IDE cable, which is already connected to the board. We'll use the master because that's the only one that will reach that high. We'll simply connect these, make sure it's secure. Then we'll have one of our power plugs here and make sure that's secure. And that's basically it for this CD DVD drive. Of course, we have to put it in the computer first, so let's do that. So for this HP computer, the DVD drive will slide through the front like so, and the way this computer will secure the drive will be with these nice little pull tabs. But because this drive is just a bare drive, first we need to put some screws in those holes so they'll click in here and right on the track. So we'll do that now. I'm not certain which hole I should use, so I'll just try out the bottom ones first. Slide the drive in. Yeah, that's the hole. So then I'll put in the screws on the other side as well. Okay, so we got the our guide screws in here that will lock in place for each side. And again, this is an old style IDE drive. Newer drives, you won't have this. You'll just have, it'll look more like a, well, this hard drive here. You'll just use a SATA power connector and then a SATA cable. But since this is an old computer, we put in the parts that will work with this computer. So now we can slide in our DVD drive. Those guide screws now should be lined up. There we go. See there, they're sliding right into the slot and once it gets all the way back you'll see it clicks right there and that's how it's secured so now all we have to do is hook it up so i'll do just as i showed earlier and take my ide cable make sure it's the right direction and push that in until it's secure then i'll choose which power i'm going to use they're all the same but i like to keep the cable short so this one looks close enough make sure it's the right direction and push it in make sure it's secure all right and for this drive that's really it and the other end of our ide cable is already plugged into our motherboard in the correct spot so let's power it on and see if it works all right we have the cd dvd drive installed computer all back together so now we'll power it on see the light is indeed blinking computer's coming up so after XP boots up, we'll pop a CD in and see if it comes up. All right, the computer's finally booted up. Press the button, it works just fine. Just pop in a random CD here. All right, we'll see if Windows Media Player comes up properly. Well, here we are. Looks like it comes up. Of course, we're not hearing audio because I don't have any speakers plugged in, but it is playing. The DVD drive is reading it. I can see the light. Fast forward. You can hear the DVD drive skip ahead. Yep. So there you go. That's how you would replace an old IDE CD or DVD drive. And always use caution whenever you're working inside of a computer.